Now, ultimately, you did become a very accomplished. You actually did obtain a music degree. Yeah. And you did do a lot of session work. Tell us about that. Well, that's kind of way, you know, the other end of, of my teenage years. Because as a teenager, I was just, I was playing weddings. I, was, I found, found out I could make money doing it, you know. So I was playing weddings. I was playing in top 40 bands. I was playing in folk clubs. So it was just whatever. Then eventually I joined the National Youth Jazz Orchestra, which was a big band. Um, I had my ambition was to be a studio player, so I really worked on my sight reading. I worked on my kind of guitarology, you know, to, to understand different styles and everything else. And, but I could only afford really one good guitar when I was a teenager. So you could tell what I was into. You know, I had a Stratocaster. And then I traded that. I got an Epiphone Triumph because I was really into playing jazz, archtop jazz. And then eventually I worked my way back to Strats and Les Pauls and went to college, studied. Uh, I didn't study guitar at college. I studied musicology and, and music theory. And then uh, when I left college, I got straight into doing studio work because I'd kind of established myself. I'd been going and playing in the pit band of Jesus Christ Superstar and Hair and stuff like that. You know, just kind of gigs. You know, I was gigging. Um, and then I became a studio player and played on all kinds of stuff. I still discover stuff I played on that I didn't know. Now at some point, Lawrence, there did come an opportunity to play with Paul McCartney. There did. Um, that came through working with Denny Lane. Denny was a guest on a TV show that I was, I was in the house band on a TV show with David Essex, Rock On. That was his song. I'm not interjecting Rock On. <laughs> um, and uh, Denny liked my playing and recommended me. And I, I had not like submitted anything, you know, my resume for consideration with Wings because I was, I was too busy being a studio player. But then this opportunity came up and I went and auditioned. I didn't know any Wings tune. I was, you know, my, my thing was to be, you know, I was listening to Larry Carlton and, you know, Alda Miola and kind of all, Lee Rittner, all the hotshot guitar players. As well as, of course, you know, my, my original influences like Clapton and Hendrix and Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page. Um, but, but interestingly enough, by the mid-70s, I mean, I, I never heard, I don't think I ever heard Stairway to Heaven until probably at least the end of the 80s. Because I just stopped, I wasn't listening, same thing with actually with Dark Side of the Moon. I wasn't listening to a lot of the rock stuff. At that period I was listening to Mahavishnu Orchestra, Return to Forever, Weather Report. You know, I was really into kind of prog rock, really, you know, going to Yes concerts. Now, now you have to tell us though, how, what was the first time going into rehearsal and finding out that you're now with Wings, you've got the job, you've got the gig, how was that? Um, pretty remarkable. You know, I had to think about it deeply for about a nanosecond. Because I was, I'd, I'd, I'd got to where I wanted to be, which was to be a studio player. So I was happy. Um, but then I'm not going to turn down the opportunity to work with Paul McCartney. So. <laughs>